Welcome to this Ardenwood Presents webinar on Medicare for Christian Scientists. I'm John Mitchell, and I serve as Executive Director and CEO for Ardenwood here in San Francisco. We've got beautiful blue skies after a lot of rain, and we are grateful that you're joining us today. Our webinars are designed to inspire and inform all of us about important topics. For instance, we have two more webinars this spring. One is on estate planning on Thursday, March 28th, and the second is on long-term care insurance on Thursday, April 11th. These are items that we get requests for, so we're happy to provide this information. In fact, we in invite you to join us in other ways too. If you're in the area or would like a place to meet a friend, come for lunch or dinner, our food here is fabulous. We also welcome overnight guests. We have lovely, large, well-appointed rooms. There's a wonderful, well-stocked Bible research library and study room that are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You have easy access to local shops and restaurants around the corner here on West Portal Avenue. And the Pacific Ocean is just two miles from here. Public transportation into the city is just steps away. You and your family are welcome at any time. Simply call the front desk to make a reservation to enjoy a meal or to spend the night. You know, as a 501c3 charitable nonprofit organization, Ardenwood supports the Ministry of Christian Science Nursing and the expectation of healing. We provide skilled Christian Science nursing care. We offer Christian Science nurses education and training and we present online events like this one. Your financial support of our programs and services is essential, and we're very thankful for each and every donation, truly. Now, our presenters today, Jim, Katie, and Nancy, will provide an update on Medicare plans that best serve Christian scientists, and then we'll answer your questions. Ardenwood is designated in the law as a religious non-medical healthcare institution, or a RINKI for short. As a RINKI, once again, a religious non-medical healthcare institution, um, one, there's a one misperception about Medicare, excuse me, as a RINKI, we're a Medicare Part A provider. Did I say that? I'll get this right. One misperception of Medicare is your physical well-being. They want to know too much information. As you know, Christian science nurses do not diagnose, so we report only general information to Medicare. As the payor, Medicare wants to ensure that care perceived should be covered. In other words, if you weren't at Arden Wood or another rinky, again, a religious non-medical health care facility, your care needs must require a hospital setting we have found that Medicare to be much less intrusive than most insurance companies. And let me explain an important point. Medicare does not in any way affect the care you receive. Medicare coverage is simply a way to, pair, to pay for the cost of your care. I also wanna emphasize here the wisdom of having a care plan and of sharing it with your family or designees. If you have a need, you want to focus, if you do have a need and you come to Ardenwood, you want your focus to be on God and healing, not on how to pay for your care. Thinking through your options in advance is a support to healing. It's also a support to those who love and care about you. One last point. Medicare is also very helpful if for any reason you find yourself in a care setting that's not your first choice. Finally, the content shared today is only informational and is not intended to be legal advice. A replay of this webinar will be available on our website, ardenwood.org, in the next day or so. Replays of all of our webinars are also available on our website. As a reminder, you can ask questions using the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Now, let me present today's presenters. Let me introduce, rather, today's presenters. Jim Maher is a certified senior advisor 
and also a broker consultant specializing in Medicare. He's a certified long-term care insurance strategist. Jim has liter talked to literally thousands of Christian scientists since our first webinar, answering innumerable questions about Medicare, long-term care insurance, and estate planning. He's a tremendous blessing to our field. Katie Burris is a Medicare specialist and certified long-term care consultant, helping individuals with their Medicare and long-term care planning strategies. Katie is a partner at McGrew & Maher Insurance Services and has been in the business for nearly 20 years. She's licensed for life insurance, long-term care, and Medicare in several states. And from what, from what Jim and Katie have both told me, they love meeting and working with all of you. Nancy Sedan is our finance director here at Ardenwood, and in her work, she has gained extensive experience working with Medicare and other health insurance policies. She, too, is happy to answer any questions you may have. So let's get started, Jim, Katie, and Nancy. It's all yours. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. We're going to start off, uh, we're going to do question and answers, but we thought we'd just do a little brief review kind of on why it's important for Christian scientists if they're going to take action, now's the time this month. So we're just going to do a little short review for you, and then we'll go into questions and answers. Here we go. So a little about us. He's Jim Maher. <laughs> I'm Katie Burris. John did a great job of introducing us, um, and he's right. We're broker consultants specializing in Medicare and long-term care. We want to point out that we are not affiliated with any government agency. So whether that's Medicare, Social Security, CMS, we are completely independent. And we're going to talk about Medicare today. I know we've talked about it in the past, but we wanted to give a little bit of a refresher. So when we talk original Medicare, that is what you get through the government and that is made up of two parts. Part A is the hospital or the rinky, the religious non-medical healthcare institution side. And part A is normally premium free as long as you or a spouse has worked 10 or more years. Part B is the medical insurance side and does have a cost associated with it. Most people pay that base premium of the 174.70 per month. Some people do pay more if they have higher income. Right. It's, it's based on your modified adjusted gross income on your tax return. So for 2024, they're going to look at your 2022 tax return. Not that the government doesn't trust you to tell them, but they're going to pull that tax return and look at that. So modified adjusted gross income is really your adjusted gross income. And if you have things that aren't super common, like tax-free um, muni bond or income, foreign income, foreign savings income, savings bond income, things like that. They're not super common. So a lot of times you can kind of look at your adjusted gross income. And if you, you're a higher earner, you don't have to worry about the government will let you know. Social Security will send you a letter saying, <laughs> we think you owe us more money. You, it's called an income-related monthly adjustment amount. So you don't have to worry about it. The government's on top of it and they will notify you. If your income has changed since two years ago, you've had an event like you've retired or you're working part-time or something like that, you can actually request that that IRMA, that higher amount be reduced now and not have to wait two years for that to catch up. There are three times and only three times that you can sign up for Medicare Part A and Part B. The first time is referred to as your initial enrollment period, and that's when you turn 65. You have three months before your birthday month, your birthday month, and three months after. Right. The second time is a special enrollment period. So if you're on a group plan and you're beyond age 65 and you come off that group plan, whether you're 67 or 69 or 71, it doesn't matter. You create a special enrollment period where you can then add, most people add Part B, because if you're receiving Social Security, you've got Part A after age 65. So you can add that during a special enrollment period, and there's no fine. That's the big thing there. Since you've been on a group plan, it protects you from being fined by the government. 
the last time that you can enroll, we're actually in that time right now, which is part of the reason we want to talk with you guys, is the general enrollment period, and that runs every year from January 1st through March 31st. So if you didn't add it, now is the time, and that is happening right now. And that is if you missed that original enrollment period, that initial when you turned 65, or if you were working until maybe 70, 72, and you came off the group plan and you missed that special enrollment period, now is when you can enroll. Keep in mind that you may be subject to a late enrollment penalty. So if you were supposed to have Part B, let's say, for two years and you haven't had it, you would have a 20% penalty. That's right. That the period to enroll right now ends March 31st. So if you don't sign up by March 31st, you would have to wait until next January 1st and sign up between January 1st and March 31st of 2025. And then once you have that coverage, you can decide if you wanted to add like a Medicare supplement plan. Right. And what we've talked to quite a few of you right now, we're still in conversation about it's a really important decision for you. And we want to try and help you. So a lot of you don't have part B and we, we totally understand, right? You never thought it was important, but as we age, sometimes part B can really help. If we have an emergency or anything like that, that's where part B comes in. Part B, even without insurance, you're going to pay a premium, but at least we know the government's going to pay 80% and you're going to pay 20% after a small deductible. But at least it gives you some kind of buffer. And we've talked to many that are in their, their 70s and some in their 80s that haven't, haven't enrolled yet. So now's the chance. So look at it this way. Don't wait till March 31st. When St. Saint, Saint Patty's Day rolls around on March 17th, <laughs> that's, your, that's your kind of final warning. You're going to the fourth quarter. You've only got a couple weeks to do it. You can't all of a decide April or May, gee, I think I'm going to do it now. You're going to have to wait until next year. And again, we just want to help you. We can go over your situations, talk about if there is a fine or isn't a fine or how much it would be. And then you have to always think about it, pray about it, make sure that's going to be, you know, the best decision for you and, and or your spouse. The other thing that's currently happening right now at the same time is the Medicare Advantage open enrollment period. And that same thing, it has the same deadline of March 31st. In this case, this is for people that have a Medicare Advantage plan already. So you have A and B and you have the Medicare Advantage plan. You have that option if you want to drop that coverage. You have from now until March 31st. And Oh, I'm sorry, Katie. I was just going to say, <laughs> Katie, pull up that card there. And it's super important because when we're talking to you, a lot of times we say, go to your wallet. You, you know you have something, but you're not quite sure. <laughs> and you pull out. That ID card, that in this case, it says Humana, it can be Cigna or Aetna or United Healthcare, whoever it is. But if it has initials after it, whether it's HMO or PPO, you're on a Medicare Advantage Part C plan. And those aren't the best for Christian scientists, as we're going to talk about, I'm sure, today as we, as we go on. But that's all you have to do. A lot of you go, well, I think I have something, but I'm not really sure. You go to your wallet and pull out that ID card. The other way you can tell... If you're paying zero lots, there's a lot of plans out there. I think two thirds of the plans out there have a zero premium. So if you're not paying anything every month and you have an ID card, chances are you have one of these plans. Um, the other kind of key that would be is um, we highlighted where, where it says the Medicare RX, um, because with the Medicare Advantage plans, they include the prescription drug coverage. So if your card has that, that's also an indication as well. So if you don't want to be on that Medicare Advantage plan, um, they're restrictive, they don't work well at Christian Science facilities, we know, then you have the option to return to original Medicare being your primary insurance, and then you can apply for a Medicare supplement plan. So you would add that if you look in your wallet and you have a card that says Medicare supplement, like that's highlighted there, then you have the supplement already. You wouldn't have to apply or do anything. 
you already have that in place. And that's important. Some of you are receiving a fine and you go, why am I being fined? Well, uh, because if you haven't enrolled for a Part D prescription drug plan, and let's say I'm 70 and I decide I'm going to do one of these no cost plans. Well, these HMO or PPO type plans, they're a bundled product. They include the, the health, but they also include the prescription drug plan. So if you haven't enrolled for Part D when you were supposed to, all of a sudden you're getting a notice saying, hey, you owe us 20 or $30 every month. And you're going, well, I thought it was premium free. That has nothing to do with the plan itself. That's the government saying, because you never enrolled for a Part D for drugs, prescription drug plan, when you're first eligible, and they fine you a certain amount every month. Normally, I think this year it's what, 34 cents or 35 cents a month, but it's for every month that you didn't have it. So if, if I've had it five years, that's 60 months times 30, you're paying like 20 some dollars a month in penalty. So if you don't want that plan and you want to go back to original Medicare and drop the Part D, the fine would go away, just so you know that, because that we were getting a lot of questions on that also. Mm -hmm. So with Part A, we talked about that's the hospital or the rinky insurance side. It covers you if you're in the hospital or if you have a hospital level stay in a rinky and that coverage is nationwide. So any rinky, any hospital in the U.S. that takes Medicare, you can go to. So we talk about the costs of that. If you need to be in a rinky for a Medicare approved stay or in a hospital, you would pay a deductible of $16.32 for the first 60 days. If you're still in the hospital or the rinky for that Medicare stay, and now it hits day 61, you would now be responsible for $408 a day. And then if you're still in there, day 91, it's now $816 per day. And we will note that any time you're in a hospital or a rinky past that 90 days, on the 91st day, it starts taking away from, they call them lifetime reserve days, and you have 60 of those to use. And you can only use those days once. So if you're in there for 100 days, day 91 through 100, you've taken away 10 of those 60 days. So if you're in a stay, let's say you're in there 150 days, we actually did have this happen recently um, with someone we talked to that used those lifetime reserve days. So the cost that they were looking at, they were looking at 1632 for the first 60 days. They were looking at another 12,240 for the next 30 days, and then an additional 48,000, um, almost 49,000 for the next 60 days. So their bill was over 62,000 that they were looking at. Right. And if they've done some planning, we're going to show you, I think as we're going to talk about the next slide here about, so we talk about the supplemental plan G all the time. It's one of my favorites. I actually have it because it's easy. If you like easy when you retire, even as a Christian scientist, uh, plan G makes sense, especially if you're going to receive care, for example, at Arden Wood. Uh, with that supplemental plan, it's going to cover me in full if I'm in a Medicare approved stay, for example, at Arden Wood, or if I'm at San Francisco General, right? If I'm at a regular hospital, almost any hospital in the United States, with the exception of VAs, you're covered in, as well as a Reiki. But think about it, that exposure goes away. And Katie and myself always say, we pride ourselves in, you know, we wanna mitigate your risk when you retire. And that's a huge risk. I mean, writing, it's easy to say, oh, write a check for $62,000. That, that's a lot of money. And sometimes you have to think, is it better to pay a smaller amount every month to an insurance company that if you do need that care, it's going to be covered in full. So that's kind of what we present. And we always like to present you with the option. And ultimately, you have to decide if that fits your budget and if that's the best thing to do for you and or your spouse. The other part is the Part B which is the medical insurance side. It covers you if you need medical care nationwide for any provider that accepts Medicare. Um, and we highlighted here the two items that we see most frequently that a Christian scientist would use Part B for um, if you needed to have like a bone set um, or what we see is like an ambulance or an emergency room right. service. Um, if something happens, someone's called 911, 
um, you're unresponsive and they maybe don't see a healthcare power of attorney um, or healthcare directive and they don't know what to do, then right. you, they would take you by ambulance to the nearest emergency room. When we're talking about the medical insurance side and the costs, this year, Part B, the medical side has a deductible of $240. And then after you meet the deductible, you're responsible for 20% of the cost. But the problem on that is there's not a cap. Right. So most insurance, um, if you're on maybe like a group plan that you've seen, has like a three, four, five thousand dollar cap where they go, listen, you hit the five thousand, you're covered, that's it for the rest of the calendar right. year. Medicare doesn't have that. So we talk about that supplement plan G. If you add that supplement plan G, it takes away that 20%. So after the $240, you would pay nothing. Right. And that's super important. Um, like uh, I know people have talked about if they have a spill or an accident or break a bone. Um, if you're getting an ambulance ride and you're in the emergency room, and you don't have Part B, you've got a, a, a massive bill. If you at least have Part B, right? That's why I'm, we're encouraging you, right? This is a time at least the government's going to pay 80% and you're going to pay 20%. But still, there's a better, if you look at this, like Katie said, if you've got some type of supplemental coverage, your exposure is limited with our Plan G there to $240. That's it. Uh, we've seen all kinds of MRIs and x-rays and advanced scans. And most Christian scientists aren't familiar with that until you have an accident. Until all of a sudden you're in the hospital and you don't want to be. And they've done procedures on you. And they present you with an incredibly, an outrageous bill. If you, I don't care if you're in there 14 or 16 hours. It's unbelievable what they'll charge you. Or if you need it for the rinky side, and that's where it really helps too, is to help cover those costs right. as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, I know we mention it every time, but the most important thing that you need to know is you don't have to remember everything that we've talked about today. I know we're going to answer, uh, we're going to do questions and answers, but we just wanted to do a quick review. Most important thing. Call or email either Jim or myself. We'd be happy to help. We work together. So you can talk to either of us. I know a lot of you email both of us and then one or the other of us responds. Um, we do not charge you to work with us. So insurance companies pay us when you do your application through us. And then the nice thing is you have us if you have any questions. It doesn't cost any more to work with us than if you go directly to the insurance company but you get us to help. So you call or email us instead of having to call or email the insurance company. Right. So I think with that, uh, John and Nancy and everybody, I think we're ready for some uh, questions. Wonderful. Well, Jim and Katie, thank you. Um, and Nancy, what before we get started on our questions, can you talk a little bit about um, advanced healthcare directives or AHCDs? Sure, sure. Um, Advanced Healthcare Directive is a, a legal document that you um, uh, that helps you determine ahead of time what type of care you would like should there be a need. Um, you can specify that you would like to uh, come to a, a, a religious non-medical health care such as Arden Wood uh, if there was a need um, rather than a hospital. Um, and you can specify several other uh, specifics um, that will help your family um, support you at a time um, when you need that support. Um, and this is a document that uh, you can find a template um, that can give you some ideas about that on our website at ardenwood.org. Um, if you look under health documents, you'll find that there. Um, so you can glance over it and look through it. Um, one of the nice things is once you've completed it, um, you can uh, save a copy. You can talk to your family about your um, your wishes. Um, you can uh, give them a PDF version of it so that they have it. Um, some people leave it on their refrigerators <laughs> so that it's easy to find. Um, and some people um, also share it with us here at Arden Wood or the Visiting Nurse Service. Um, so that we also have access to it should there be a need. Um, so it's something that just helps you um, make a decision 
ahead of time that helps you um, uh, uh, feel, helps your family feel good about what your wishes are. And sometimes it opens the door for a good conversation with your family um, so that uh, everybody's on the same page. Thank you, Nancy. Beautifully stated. Can't emphasize how important it is to have an AHCD or Advanced Healthcare Directive. Thank you. Well, we've got a number of question, good questions here, so let's let's get underway. First up, I don't have Part B right now. How do I add that, and what will my cost be? Well, wait, that's a good question because we're just talking about that. So. So now is the time that you can add Part B, and you do that through Social Security, right? That's kind of the confusing part. There are no Medicare offices out there. If they just had Medicare offices, it would make it easier for everybody, but there are none. So you do that through Social Security. And you, again, I'm giving you the, the you know, St. Patty's Day warning. That's when you want to. You don't want to wait till the 31st and try and do it. You think St. Patrick's Day, I want to start doing that Part B thing. And again, the cost this year, the base premium is $174.70. If you're on Social Security, which most of you are probably, they will pull that right out of your Social Security payment every month. But we really encourage you to, to really look at doing that now and call us as soon as you want to talk about it, because that's important, I think, that you at least get Part B. And I might just add, um, you've, you've said that very well earlier, Katie. Um, but for the Christian scientist who's um, thinking about um, covering care at a rinky, remember that the Part B uh, insurance uh, enables you um, to then be able to purchase a Medicare supplemental that would help you with the deductibles and, and, and co-insurance on the Part A. Um, so it's, it's a step by step. You know, if you have the Part B, now you can get that Medicare supplemental policy that would help you cover the uh, the co-insurance and deductibles and um, that uh, might be um, uh, a, an expense for you. Um, and that that's why another reason why Part B is is something to consider. Great, great, great answers. Next up, I am paying a Part D penalty on my Medicare plan. It's an HMO. I didn't think I had Part D. So why are they charging me a penalty it, it's funny we just i think we literally <laughs> just talked about that but we get that from quite a few people say, you know talking about that katie um the reason for that is because with medicare advantage or those hmo type plans the prescription drug benefit is just it's built into it so you can't have a medicare advantage and just pull the prescription drug premium or the coverage out of it it's already built into it so if you haven't consistently had prescription drug coverage, then that's where you have the issue where you're paying that penalty. Great. Next up, can I get a supplemental plan G without having part B? No, <laughs> that's easy. No, you have to have A and B to get G. How's that? Perfect. <coughs> I know you have mentioned there will be a penalty for not signing up for Part B when I turn 65. I'm 74 now. How do I calculate that penalty? So the way that penalty is calculated is Medicare assumes that when you're 65 that you need to sign up for Part B. The only reason that you wouldn't have to sign up for Part B is if you're on a group plan that has more than 20 employees. So if you're seven, 74, um, so yes. if you're 74, you could be looking at nine years. You could be possibly looking at less. So let's say you worked on a group plan and you didn't retire until 70, right. then you're only looking at four years of penalty. Um, but you, there's a form that you basically have to fill out to go to Social Security and say, I was working for this employer. That's why I didn't sign up. And that helps lessen that penalty. Right. Um, but it that penalty is 10% for every 12-month period that you should have had Part B and didn't. So possibly as much as nine years in that case. Yeah. So not and quite I, 100%, just, but pretty close. Yeah. 
just to clarify, uh, it may seem simple, but 10% of the premium. Yes, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The yeah. So if it's $174 and it's $17. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. Thank you. <laughs> if Plan G is the same with all insurance companies, why don't I want the lowest cost plan available? Isn't it better to get the lowest cost one? Okay, I'm going to tell you something my mother told me a long time ago. <laughs> to prove, uh, I've used it and I tried to find it. She goes, don't ever buy cheap. Don't buy cheap shoes or a cheap mattress. And I had to learn the, the hard way about when I started in the insurance industry 35 plus years ago. Uh, oh, cheap shoes will work. And you keep going through them and through them. And it's like, wow. Then you go buy an expensive pair and you're like, oh, so much better. <laughs> Not the most expensive one, but, you know, just a nice a nice pair of shoes or a good mattress, right? When you're first married, you're buying cheap stuff. And, and she was right. The same holds true for your insurance. If I buy a company out there that's really cheap right now, there's a reason they're really cheap. A lot of times, these some of these different insurance companies come out and they open new plans and they'll sell a plan G. And a, let's just say the market, everybody's in the $125 or $130 range and they're in the $100 and $95 range. It's like, there is no way. So they're opening this new block of business so everybody can go in there and there's really no claims. So you're going, wow, we have these really, really cheap rates. And guess what? There's not enough people. There's not enough people. So if you have people that have health issues, guess what? They're going to have to go to the insurance company and insurance commissioner and say, hey, we need to raise our rates 15 or 20 percent, right? Because we don't have enough people in there. If you use a company that's been around for a long time, and I'm a big fan of the AERP United Healthcare simply because they have the largest membership out there. They've got almost four and a half million people. So they're able, this is Insurance 101, by the way. I've gone from my mom to Insurance 101. But <laughs> they're able to spread that risk out. So if they have some unhealthy people, that doesn't impact the rest of them. They it's have not a, the Christian scientists, it's the other It's people. the other people. It's not <laughs> Christian scientists, it's the other people, right? That's a good point, Katie. Um, but that, that really does matter. Numbers really do matter. So when it comes back to buying cheap, you really have to look at the company. We see that all, all the time. We get asked all the time, hey, would you sell company ABC or company XYZ? And we're like, no, we're not comfortable with that because we know you're going to be really the low cost right now. And in two or three years, your premiums are going to skyrocket 15, 20, 30 percent. So that's why I know that I started off with shoes and mattress, but I did turn it into insurance. Don't buy cheap. The only right? other thing that I would say is the other thing that we look at with insurance companies is we're only going to sell insurance companies that have a history of paying their claims right. well. Yeah. Because yeah. the last thing that you want to do is pay the premium every month and then you have a claim and the insurance company fights you on it. Like, that's that's awful. Yeah. You don't want to do that. Yeah. And Nancy, I think you've had good experience, right, with United Healthcare. The, you we know, have. We have. Um, that's important. The, mm -hmm. the Medicare supplemental plans that help supplement the, the um, Part A deductibles and coinsurance, they will automatically pay once we... Um, submit a claim to uh, Medicare, um, AARP uh, very quickly. We've had some issues with some of some other vendors, but that one for sure um, uh, has been prompt and um, immediate. Um, so Good to hear. yeah, we're, we're so comfortable with that. And one of our recommendations, a lot of times to Christian scientists is that is one of our top companies, simply because we know it's not going to be a hassle for a Christian scientist if they do go into Arden Wood or, or any other Christian science uh, rinky out there. Great. Next up, how can I identify what coverage I presently have? I have the 2024 Social Security Statement, your new benefit amount, but I don't see any reference to Plan A or Plan B, just a deduction for Medicare medical insurance. Is that the same as Plan A? No, no, I think they're talking about their their statement. The medical insurance would be part that's B. Part, part B, B, right? That that's that's what that cost is. Mm -hmm. So they do have. Uh, so the government, um, CMS, Medicare, sometimes they don't call it Part A or Part B. They say Part A is the hospital insurance. 
Part B is the medical insurance. That's what they refer to it as. Mm -hmm. So that would be that deduction. And that would indicate that that individual has original Medicare. Um, uh, and, uh, and so that deduction is showing up on that sheet because it's being deducted from your monthly Social Security payment. Correct. Right. The other way to, um, if you have any insurance on top of that, look in your wallet. Or um, the other thing I tell people is if they're not sure, look if you have anything like automatically coming out of like your social security besides that medical premium or have something coming out of like your your checking account or your savings account and you go, that, that sounds like an insurance company, right. then that would be for sure. Great. Next question. I have original Medicare with a supplement through Regents. My question is, can my Medicare pay for journalisted practitioner bills? That's Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not familiar with Regents, R-E-G-E-N-C-E. -E. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that either. Um, in Assume general- there's another in insurance company, right, that's got the, the Plan G. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Christian science practitioner bills are not um, covered under uh, any, the Medicare supplemental plans. They work in tandem with the Medicare um, charges uh, only. So, um, so they're not covered in that way. Thank you. What is the special enrollment period if you're on a group plan at work and are over 65, but not retiring until age 71? I should have been a little more clear on that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that special enrollment period. So when you're getting ready to retire and you're coming off the group plan, what you really want to do is you want to have that coincide. So let's say you're retiring December 31st of 2024. You want to talk to Social Security a few months ahead of time and have them start your Part B for January 1st. Mm -hmm. um, we do have theirs because it when you wait until you're 71, there's a couple of forms that you're going to have to fill out um, in order to tell Social Security that you want to start that Part B. Right. Um, so, and we have those. We can provide those so you can get in touch with us. Um, the other thing, too, is if you're not going to retire till 71, my guess is you're going to start Social Security before you retire. Um, right. They will probably sign you up for Part A and Part B at that time but you can tell them that you want part A only as long as you're staying on that group plan. And I'd be happy to send you an email right. if you want to send us an email. Yeah. I can reply back with the email so that you have the timeline on that. And that's an important point too, because people don't understand that, but the group plan does protect you from fines. But when you turn 65, the government's saying, listen, we're going to assume that you're guilty. Now you have to prove yourself innocent. So those six years you have to account for and they're real simple forms. It just simply says, I've been working for a company, ABC, uh, since I've been 65, and you sign it, HR signs off on it, and that's really all they need. Mm -hmm. And then you can start your, your Part B at that time, since you've already got A. And of course, that company needs to have had more than 20 people, right? That's right, Nancy. Normally, that's the case, <laughs> right? Yeah. That's really helpful, because you do have to meet all these requirements, so... That's right. why we have these webinars. This is not a lifetime penalty gets really right. scary. <laughs> and the other thing to really answer the question, technically, you really have eight months after you retire, after I leave that group plan to add my part B, but you don't want to do that because people mess it up and then they don't do it. Then they have to wait to the following year and they're going to face a penalty. So you don't want to do that. I'm like, Katie, you want to give three or four months in advance. So everything's just smooth. You, you worked hard all your life. You want a smooth transition. So that way you get part B set up, like Katie said, if you're retiring December 31st. So everything starts January 1. It just makes your life easy, really, really does. The other thing that we tell a, a lot of people, you know, when we're doing presentations for large corporations or school districts or whatever, about three to four months before you are yeah. set to retire, call us or email us and we can go, okay, here's the steps. You do right. this, that, you decide if you want the insurance, here's the price and kind of just roadmap it out of exactly what you need right. to do. Yeah, we had a lot of calls at the end of February saying, gee, February 29th, uh, I'm retiring on the 1st. Should I have done anything? I'm like, hey, yeah, I should have called us before the Thanksgiving uh, holiday. Yeah, that, that extra day of the year. Yeah, that extra day. Yeah. I have a, I love acrostics, you know, where you take a word and, and make 
words out of it. So mine for plan is prayerful listening, acting now. Wow, that's really good. So it's really. like you're listening all the time, but you're yeah, acting on it. Yeah. So okay. Good. Good. Yeah. okay, next up. I thought that I was supposed to enroll 10 months after I turned 65. I turned 65 this September 2024. So I thought I was to enroll in May of 2025. Am I mistaken? You have three months before your birthday. You have the month of your birthday. And you have three months after to enroll during that initial enrollment period. So you could wait until December to apply and have that start for like January 1st. But no, 10 months. You yeah. have seven months total, three months before, a month of, three months after. Yeah. After that, you could be subject to that general enrollment period, right. penalty. That's a mess. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. We've been doing this a long, a long, long time. <laughs> and normally they go, well, listen, I got this advice from my golf buddies. Oh. My neighbor told me, my brother in law said, my brother in law said, my brother in law said, my brother in law told me dinner. it was 10 months. And I'm like, well, he, he was with well intention, but yeah, I'm, was he not yeah. right? I had a dollar for every time my right. brother in law gets that advice. Thing. to be rich. That, that, is, that yeah. brother in law, exactly. <laughs> Anyways, it's just. You know, you hear all these numbers and you go, well, who do I believe? They're they're all trying to help you, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're well-intentioned, but they're wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here's one. I just canceled my plan G because I was counseled that because I have TRICARE for Life, which is a military offering, if you serve in the United States military, TRICARE for Life, I do not need a Medicare supplement. Please verify. Yeah, that's true. Yes, mm -hmm. and you don't need a Part D prescription drug plan because you have uh, coverage through the through Tricare. That's true. Yeah, you don't need that. And thank you for your service. And thank you for your service. <laughs> That's absolutely absolutely. True. And we've we've had Nancy. We've had great experience with Tricare for Life. We have it. Yeah. it, it, it acts just as a Medicare supplemental. Uh, I can verify that, and and indeed, it also um, pays automatically if if there's a a, a Medicare covered stay here. TRICARE is different than VA. TRICARE, you must enroll for parts A and B of Medicare, right? You must because that becomes primary, TRICARE secondary. With the VA, you don't have to. So that's that's different. But for TRICARE, you're good to go. You don't need supplemental coverage. Mm -hmm. Great. We're getting a lot of good questions here. Um, so next up, how does adding plan how much does adding plan g cost it's a, so plan it's a lot less g. than sixty thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> i know i'm sorry i just uh, um it it depends so it depends on the state you live in it right. depends on your age um in some states it depends on if you're male or female right example around around here in our area right. in northern california when you're turning 65, it's about 130. Yeah, about 130, 135 dollars a month. But if you're in a different state, right? Massachusetts is going to be more than California. Other uh, guaranteed issue state, New York's going to be more. So there's some states that cost a lot more, and some that are less. It, but it really depends. Um, and you can always call or email us, and we would be happy to give yeah. you um, an, an estimate right. of the pricing. Yeah. Perfect, friends. Please use Katie and. Um, Jim. Jim and Nancy. I mean, my goodness, I, it's geez, this is you got to make sure we get this right. What is it? What is what is I have? I have a supplement E. I am overpaying. Com am I overpaying compared to Plan G? Yeah. E. So you know what they had all these plans for years, and they've taken some away. Like, and I think E. I think D is still out there. Um, you may be, you know, um, uh, we get a lot of people have had Plan J, for example. Plan J doesn't exist. That stopped in 2006 or 2004. I can't remember. But it, yeah, you absolutely want to check and see. You may be way overpaying because remember, we're talking about that insurance stuff. If all of a sudden they don't have enough new people come into that block of business and you get you get more sick people, not Christian scientists, but others, and, and they're driving up that price, right? They have no choice they don't have enough bodies in there on there so you absolutely want to check yeah i would encourage them to do that yep. i don't think we've had a question on plan, plan e. e no 
Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. the first time I remember. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They to... win for the question that hasn't been asked. Stump the band. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Got some kind of <laughs> I had never heard of Plan G as an option. Still not sure how that works. How much is it monthly, yearly? These are kind of recurring questions, but I am sure. reading yeah, the questions. No, it's it's very so. confusing. And like when we just said, Plan G is what I have. And it really depends where you live. In Northern California, it's less costly. If I live in Southern California, it's more expensive. If I live in Tennessee, it's not as expensive. If I live in Florida, it costs more. If I live in New York, it costs more. It really depends where you live. So we always look at your zip code, right, and what state, and it's determined. I'm not going to how insurance companies rate everybody, but yeah, it can be, it just really depends your age and your zip code. And and we have a little two-page detail that we can send over on Plan G that just goes right. brief, so yeah. not shown on how it works. Um, all we have to know is date of birth. We need to know home zip code and then Part A and Part B effective right. dates. Yeah, and it. then we can yeah. give you a quote. You don't even have to give us your name. <laughs> so, so. I, I'd like to also add perhaps um, uh, just um, for general information that these uh, Medicare supplemental plans with these letters at the end of them are standardized. So, um, you know, the exact same benefits uh, for Plan G in California are the same benefits in all these other states. Um, right. But as, as um, Katie and Jim are saying, it, it costs different based on your state. But the right. plan itself, the, the whether it'll co pay the co-insurance and, and uh, co-payments and uh, all these different uh, things that are included in it, all those are standardized. So they're all uh, right. going to be the same in whatever that, state That's a really in. good point, Nancy. And you should be the insurance person because that's absolutely right. She's going on with us right? for our next appointment. So <laughs> it's interesting. There's a few states that don't call it Plan G. And we have got a lot of calls from Massachusetts. So Massachusetts, Katie, does not call it Plan G. It's Plan 1A. It's Plan 1A, okay? <laughs> plan 1A equals Plan G. Mm -hmm. Right, it does, but they in Massachusetts and I think what is it, Michigan and Minnesota? I can't remember, a couple two other mm -hmm. states, but they use it. That's what we, just, we talk about Plan G, and then if someone calls us one of those states, we're like, okay, listen, your state's it's, a little different, it's it's but, equal to, yeah, right. So, there's a new one out there for people. I'm on my husband's employer's health insurance plan, I turned 65 a few years ago and was told to sign up for Medicare Part A, and then I didn't have to add anything unless he, unless until he retires. And then I am off his insurance, and is that time I add other parts? Is that correct? Am I okay with that? Yeah, you're you're doing everything absolutely perfectly, right? You qualify for that 20 or more. special enrollment period, and then you're gonna add on Part B. That's exactly, you're doing everything correct. Mm -hmm. As long as that employer has 20 or more employees, that's, that's the cap. The only thing you want to look at, because we see a lot of this too, sometimes employers, it depends on what the dependent cost is. If the dependent cost, like a lot of times they'll cover the employee at 100% or 90%, and for the dependent, they may say, you have to pay 100% of that cost. Well, then you really want to do a cost comparison and go, okay, if my, my share cost on my husband's group plan is more than... $400 a month, right? A couple hundred dollars every every week or whatever, however they get paid. You want to look and go, is that really in my best interest to stay on that plan? Because a lot of times we just had a, a client in uh, earlier this week where we did the same thing. They were paying 400 and some dollars a month and for less than $300, they were to get better coverage at a less, lesser cost. So it always it always depends, but but you are doing the right thing. You don't have to uh, enroll for Part B and do any other insurance if you don't want to. Great. I always heard open enrollment is in December, or is it Part D, excuse me, or is it Part B, or is Part B different, excuse me? Um, so Part B just has those three times, that initial enrollment period when you're turning 65, or the special enrollment period when you're over 65 and coming off the group plan, and the third option being between January 1st and March 31st. The Medicare open enrollment that you hear all the time, so the commercials, the radio, TV advertisements, that Medicare open enrollment happens from October 15th through December 7th, and that is when people already on Medicare A and B that have insurance 
can switch their prescription drug plan or they can switch their Medicare Advantage plan. That doesn't have anything to do with adding Part B, but that's so confusing. So, John, it's really simple. So, if you don't do the IEP and you're the group, you go SEP. If you mess up on the SEP, you do GEP. And there is no plan E that we're aware of. Simple math. <laughs> it's funny. I happen to be listening. <laughs> I happen to be listening to AM radio, and I don't know why I was driving somewhere. I thought it was Medicare radio. I mean, ad sure. after ad after ad yeah. for yeah. different plans. They're all plans. the best. Yeah, they're all the best. Oh anyway, my! Really? Mean, sometimes you just have to have a little fun with Medicare, right? Yeah. You just have to, so, please offer advice on the following example: enrolled. I enrolled in a Part A and B and supplement G, have bone set in hospital, then need rehabilitation, help with regaining mobility, medication free. Could Ardenwood be a choice? If so, since a medical procedure has been done, is there paperwork required by Medicare to switch to a Christian science care facility? Good question. Oh, that's a great question. Yeah, so um, of course, yes, you can come to Rinky anytime that you decide that that's the right thing for you. Um, and with your um, the, with that particular person's need, um, what would happen is when you came to um, a Barden Wood or a Rinky, you would sign what's called an election form, a Medicare election form, and uh, it's a document, a legal document that says to Medicare, I am a uh, I want to have my Medicare benefits payable at a Rinky. Um, and um, so it puts them on notice that that's where you are and what you want. And um, so prior to the day that you arrive and sign this, um, Medicare is going to pay the hospital bills. Um, but once you sign this election, now they'll pay your benefit to um, a rinky. Um, and so um, there's that's a very smooth process and um, uh, it, it's, uh, uh, hopefully that's clear. Great. So the takeaway is sign up for Medicare Part A and B and Medicare Supplement G, question mark. Correct? Well, that's what I get. So uh, it works for me. So I think yeah. if, if that's what you're, yeah, if that's what you want um, and you want your life easy, right, I can go to a, a rinky for a care or if I needed uh, a hospital or emergency, yes, I think that would be, that's sound advice. Next, I think there are a lot of questions. This is, we've done a lot of these. These are the most questions we've ever had. So we'll keep going. <laughs> We're good. Okay. Uh, I think I already have part D deducted, part B, excuse me, part B deducted from my social security monthly check. Would that change? Not if you're wanting to add the supplement. Right. So part B, once you're on A and B, that that stays the same. Right. If you add the advantage that each one type plan or you want to add a supplement, that does not change part B. That stays the right. same. How about paying for Christian Science nursing care at home? Nancy? Um, that is not something that Medicare covers. Um, um so that's that's a no for the in terms of of any of the things we're talking about part a part b medicare supplemental none of those would cover care at home we'll be talking at the as we close about the national fund for christian science nursing but that's a different we'll talk about that at the end here i pay the oh, minimum sorry although that is a good good time to mention it um right. happy to 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 sort of jump on that um so if someone was um, nursing at home, uh, Christian Science nursing at home, um, or in a facility, and had a financial need, then uh, the National Fund is um, available to apply to for a, a financial grant based on your financial needs. So that is another way to help uh, cover a cost um, if, if there is such a need. And they have a wonderful website um, nfcsn.org, National Fund for Christian Science Nursing.org. Um, you'll hear that again, I'm sure, when in John's comments at the end. Exactly. I pay the minimum for Medicare, signed up for Part A and B, 
And I also have Part B IRMAA, which doubles my Medicare plus Part D, which I do not have to pay a penalty. I have Medicare Advantage, which I do not pay a premium for. If I switch to a supplemental, does Part B IRMAA go down? Uh, no. So an, an IRMA, right? Not an IRMA, but an income-related monthly adjustment amount. That's that's the uh, tax, the uh, Medicare surcharge, right? They're charging you more because of that. So that has nothing to do with the penalty whatsoever. That's just because based on your, your income, you're a higher earner, they charge you more. So, and what was the second part of the question? If you have Part D. Uh, Medicare, you... yeah. I, I thought this, the question said that they had Medicare Advantage, but it sounded oh, like they have part. So if, if they have Advantage and they drop that, right, um, then they don't have to worry about any penalty. The IRMA doesn't go away because the IRMA is based on income. But if you're a Christian scientist and you want to ultimately go into an Arden Wood or a VA or wherever you're going to go, you, you want to have at least supplemental coverage or at least have original Medicare and not, not an Advantage plan. I think that would be actually be a disadvantage to Christian scientists if your goal is to receive spiritual care at Ardenwood, for example, spiritual healing. If you right? do have that Part B, that IRMA, or that higher, um, higher, higher tax that they're charging for Part B, if you have a life-changing event, so let's say you've retired or you're now working part-time or in um, years ago, my father passed away, um, he was a higher income earner. He worked almost till the day he passed away. Um, and then my mom was retired, so she wasn't working. So we went down to Social Security because loss of a spouse right. is a life-changing event because yeah. that changed the income. Um, you can request that IRMA be reduced now instead of having to wait a year or two years for that to catch up. Right. That was a lot of answers to a question. Right. That that was a good question. <laughs> when making a job switch, how is a gap in coverage handled? So Medicare says that you really you don't want more than like a 63 day lapse in coverage. Um, what I would suggest, I think maybe they're asking because they're over 65. If you're over 65, and you're switching employers, my suggestion, I don't know what you think, is have your employer fill out that form to confirm right. that you have been covered under their group plan. And then right. when you go to the new company and you're leaving that one, have that company fill it out as well so you right. can confirm all that time right. that you've been covered by group plans. Right. The other thing too is if you have ID cards, right? Because I've seen that before. Something... If, uh, I don't know, if the company's not around or something and you need, if you have ID cards, a lot of times that'll satisfy because it'll show you, for example, I've had Blue Blue Shield, Blue Cross of Minnesota for these years, and then we switched to Humana for these years, and I have those ID cards. That, that'll also prove that you've been on a group plan. Mm -hmm. So Great don't idea. always throw all that stuff away. So yeah. stick, stick them in a file, right, under healthcare and in case you need them. Interesting. Great. I'm 72 now and did not enroll in Plan B initially. I was under my wife's employer, employer's group health insurance program for a number of years, and her employer went out of business. Long story short, I don't have the tax records to substantiate coverage. Any thoughts, just like we talked about? I think we just kind of... It, yeah. Two suggestions. I liked your suggestion of if you have an ID card, um, the other option that I would say is to, if you can, <laughs> if you can remember the insurance company they used, maybe it was Blue Cross Blue Shield of Texas. Right. Um, and you can always call them and say, you know, I had coverage. I know it ended, but I need proof that I had right. that coverage. Um, and they might be able yeah. to provide that to you. That's a really good suggestion. Other option, call 1-800-MEDICARE. Um, or call Social Security and ask them, you know, I was here is my situation. How would I prove that if the company is no longer in business? Right. They may have a creative answer to you. Yeah. Great. Is it best to have insurance within a health insurance company as well as Medicare Part A and B? Does age enter into that decision? Uh, There's 
a but, lot of decisions that enter yeah. into that. It's really dependent on, you know, if you look at the cost of adding the insurance, like the supplement and that, if that's not financially feasible, if it's something where you go, listen, I just, that's not something that I feel comfortable with. Right. Um, but I mean, age may factor into it because your premiums may a little be a little bit higher and you go, you know what? I just, that doesn't make sense for right. me. And, and, you know, for Christian scientists, you know, God has blessed you with incredible help. Um, if you're a non-Christian scientist, most people, when you go beyond that initial enrollment period or their guaranteed issue to get a supplemental plan, they can't answer the health questions. No, you have to answer health questions to make sure you're healthy enough to get the plans. Well, most non-Christian scientists can't answer those questions, quite honestly. They're like, oh, yeah, no, I have been in the hospital last two years. Yes, I have some health condition, and therefore the insurance company doesn't have to take you. So you just want to get it when, when you're in good health and you can answer no to the health questions, when you're beyond that guaranteed issue. That means when the insurance company has to give you the policy regardless of your health care or your health condition. I think I said that right. There's a lot of, a lot of similar questions here. <laughs> oh. yeah, they are similar. And that's I'm trying to parse through them, but I'm just right. mostly reading them as they are. We This is the most questions we've ever had. Um, can you explain part C? I've heard that on I've heard of that on many TV commercials, the supplement plan. Also expanded Medicare. I believe my state has that, Missouri, and I'm 61. At what age do I need to take action? Um, so Part C is the same thing as Medicare Advantage. Right. So a lot of times with Medicare, there's terms, two or three terms that mean the same thing. So a Part C is also a Medicare Advantage plan. Um, you see those on TV commercials so often. Joe Namath, right? Yeah. Joe Namath. You see Joe Namath, that's a Medicare Advantage Part C plan. Yeah. They're so profitable to the insurance companies. That's why they um, push them. So that's why you see them on commercials so often. Um, but yeah, Part C are the Medicare Advantage. The downside to Medicare Advantage or Part C plans is you have to stay within their network of doctors, hospitals, providers. Um, they're supposed to allow you to go to a rinky and be seen if you need to. Um, but I know Nancy and John, you guys have both mentioned that you've had issues with that in the past of not getting paid in a timely manner or sometimes not getting paid at all. Right. So right. And and as you can understand, we're um we were we would not be in their network. We're not a medical facility. Um, and so uh, for them to understand that they are required to give you all the benefits that part A or part B um include, which would mean going to a rinky, um, it, it sometimes is hard to uh, educate them. It does, it's not impossible, but to, to let them know that indeed, if you choose to go to a rinky, that is part of your right as, as um, a Medicare a recipient. Um, uh, it then poses quite power problems for them uh, in terms of how do they um, uh, qualify you and of course, we don't need you to be qualified, but if you're an Advantage plan, then you have to follow their rules. And their right. rules say, sometimes will say, um, you need to go to a provider within their network and they have to determine that you have a need um, that qualifies. Now, a rinky does not need that. And if you're wanting to go to a rinky, you do not have to go through those steps. So we have to educate them that no, you don't need to go to a provider to do this. And um, mm -hmm. it takes a while to get to the right person to help them understand. And then we're not in their system to to bill. So there are, are issues in, in timing of payment, as Katie mentioned. Um, so, uh, and also they also require a good bit of um, detailed information about your needs. And we are not in the habit of, of you know, tracking that kind of, of thing. That's not what we do here. Um, but they require it in order for the care, the, 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 for them to still cover it. So those are the issues that we face. It does not mean you couldn't go to Advantage Plan if that's right for you and your family. Um, but these are the same things that we have experienced and uh, just want to alert you to so you can make the right decision for your family. And then Nancy, no, um, so one of the other issues that I've seen on the Medicare Advantage or the Part C plans 
is um, we've talked to quite a few Christian scientists where all of a sudden they need to go to a rinky or they need maybe I had a bone and I need to have the bones that or something like that. And the insurance company is going, you have to go through this primary care physician. And they go, I don't know who it is. I never went and saw them because I'm a Christian scientist and I don't. And what I've seen this happen a few times is that that primary care physician ends up dropping you as a patient because you don't come in and be seen yeah. and they're worried about the liability of, I have you listed in my books as being a patient and you're not coming in and being seen. And so then I've talked to one of them a couple of weeks ago where they were having the issue where they needed to get services and they couldn't because they had no primary care physician assigned to them because they were dropped for not seeing that primary care physician. So it's like this whole catch right. 22 that was happening. I'm going to simplify it. Okay. If your goal is to receive <laughs> care at Ardenwood, right? Medicare Advantage Part C plans are bad. They're not good. Original Medicare is good, right? That's good because you can get in there covered under Part A. The supplement helps cover that. That's good. But again, and people, it's very confusing because people get signed up for it and they go, oh, and Medicare Advantage plan, bad if you want to receive care at Arden Wood. Seriously, and I'm, I'm, it's that simple. It really is. John, do you agree with it's, that? I completely gonna... agree. Can you say it one more time, Bill? Uh, Jim? <laughs> well, <okay. laughs> we, um, I, and I do ahead. totally agree with that as well. But I do want to say that if someone has a Medicare, a sub, uh, excuse me, a Medicare Advantage plan, we will certainly still receive them. Sure. Um, and um, we will work with and go through these hurdles that I've just talked about. So um, it doesn't exclude you from receiving care here if you have that. But this is just the time to be thinking through those things and making a decision that might okay. might free you up better, um, free us all up better um, if there was a need in the future. Yeah. And so when you get the bill, I mean, that's that's why we're we're trying to educate the field so that if you want to use get receive care at Ardenwood, we'd like to be paid for our services. And that, you know, we we want to make sure that everyone gets the care that they need. But imagine you providing whatever your business is, um, providing a service uh, to another organization or an individual and you don't get paid for a year or two or never. I mean, that's why we're trying to avoid this. And you, there's so many more advantages, um, maybe the wrong word to use, so many more yeah, benefits um, to having original Medicare and yes. these other plans that we're talking about. Friends, I'd it's like to five just put a, Oh, sure. Sorry. <laughs> I was just gonna put a little plug in for the Christian Science Provider Network, um, uh, which is an organization that has helped uh, rinkies throughout the country um, uh, provide legal um, correspondence with these Medicare Advantage plans to help them understand that it is their re requirement, legal requirement to um, to pay um, for the care provided um, to one of their participants. Um, and just so grateful for their, um, their, these are solid, wonderful Christian scientists that um, are helping to pave the way so that um, the, these kinds of hurdles can be jumped over. Um, mm -hmm. Christian Science Provider um, Network is is a wonderful organization um, to know about and be supportive of. It's a huge help, exactly. Friends, it's five o'clock and we've got a lot of questions remaining. We're not gonna take any new questions, but we will work through the questions that we have. And as I say, there are quite a few. Um, right. So, but no, we won't be taking any new questions at this point because there are so many. Okay. You have already covered this. You may have already covered this. I'm working full time and have group health care through the company, and I pay approximately $110 a month. I turn 65 in May. What do you recommend that I do? Start Medicare or stay with my current insurance? If yeah. it's 70, I'm still on my husband's employer's insurance. Will I still have to pay a penalty since I didn't sign up for Part B when I was 65? Um, so as long as you're on the group plan, again, with the 20 or more employees, that's, that's, that's the magic number right there. Then you can stay on that. 
Yeah. You can stay on that anytime after 65. You don't have to worry about a penalty, nothing like that. Um, but when you're coming off that group plan, that's when you want to sign up for Part B. Um, and like Jim said, you technically have eight months once you lose the group coverage. Most people want that to just coincide. Right. So you end it the end of one month, you start Medicare Part A and B or Part B if you already have A, mm -hmm. the first of the next month, and you don't get the penalty because you have a form filled out by the HR department stating that you've been on that group coverage. Right. So that's what stops you from getting penalized. I, I just would like to ask, um, uh, not all employer plans cover care in a rinky. Employer plans are not the same as Medicare coverage. It, 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 please correct me if I'm wrong, Katie and Jim. No, no you're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so that right. is just another wrinkle to consider um, right. um, to make sure that um, if you're trying to choose between shall I stay on the plan or go to uh, right. become uh, covered by Medicare, um, just make sure that the employer plan has the benefits that you want um, to cover you. Great. <laughs> it sounds like Medicare Part A, B, and G, and Part G are what a Christian science person needs. Where can I find the cost of Part G premiums? Is there a web page? As again, some of these questions are repetitive, but we'll we'll, we'll email move through us, them. Email us or call us, and we'll send the we email you the information so you'll have it and you can review it. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I know our contact information. We didn't show it yet. That shows at the end. Right. I have Anthem Supplemental PPO that pays dental coverage with no monthly premium and no copay for dental care. Can we sign up for this insurance from you instead of the local healthcare insurance agent as we currently use? If so, is your contact information available on Ardenwood's webpage? The answer is yes, you can change, right? Because if you have a PPO, that's a Medicare Advantage plan. So you can change and we're licensed throughout the country. So just call us. And we can go over the details, email or call, and we're happy to. Yep. And our contact information shows at the end of this presentation. Right. right. We mm -hmm. do. I do. I've looked ahead. We do have a questions that keep asking that. Where is your contact information? It's at the end. <laughs> okay. of this. We're holding you to the end. <laughs> um, how do I apply for plan B? Do I go through the social security office or do you handle this? I'm no, 77 you... and did not take part B when I began Medicare at least 13 years ago. Right, you, you go through Social Security, right? And they'll determine and tell you what the fine is. So you wanna know all that before you enroll and make sure that's in your best interest. But I would think that would be even with the fine, you wanna get Part B. Yeah, Part A, Part B are through the government. And then the insurance is through us and we help you apply. And then that's how we get paid. That's how we're your agent. Um, and then we're here to help for any questions that you have along the way. And I can just say, just giving a plug for, um... Jim and Katie, we've as literally thousands of Christian scientists have reached out to them. And I don't get, usually, you know, when you recommend someone, they don't go to the person, they go back to you because you recommended them. Um, we've had such wonderful experience, such a wonderful experience with Jim and Katie. We've had no um, complaints. So I hope that means something okay. to those <laughs> in our listening audience. Because um, this yeah. is complicated and you got to get it right. Yeah. And this is so complicated. And I, I feel like sometimes when I'm talking to a Christian scientist, they call and they're almost like apologetic that like, I don't understand this. Right, right. And my answer is I talk to non-Christian scientists who are <laughs> you know, familiar with medical care every single day. Right. Um, I had one tell me yesterday, she goes, okay, can you just talk to me like I'm a five-year-old and just go <laughs> through this real yep. quickly? Yep. Medicare is confusing right. for everyone, yeah. period. It doesn't right. matter. Exactly. Now, you know what we call that, John, in our office? Job, Job security. security. <laughs> there you go. That's what I tell the IT guy every time he comes to my office. He says, do you realize you have job security for life? Because no one can understand these computers. Um, does the Veterans Administration or the VA supplement Medicare for Christian science care? I'm not sure that, yeah. Not that I'm aware of, Nancy. I it's not TRICARE for life. I, because I, because if, if you're on VA, you don't have to have Medicare, right? So so I don't think the VA is going to pay Arden Wood. I'm guessing no. Never. Yeah. It's not going to I, 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 I don't know the answer to that, but I, I think, you know, so long as it's not Medicare, then 
that the rinky rinky is a des designation in Medicare. So exactly. Here's one. Can you tell me about Plan N? That is what is on my card. Right. So it's a different plan than Plan G. Without going into too much detail, you have the same deductible, but you have some co-pays. And you have to worry about if a, if a doctor or a physician or you see somebody, if they're, it, it's kind of confusing. And I don't want to kind of go down that rabbit hole. Um, but a lot of times G is easier and, and the spread, the cost on between G and N doesn't justify having N, right? A physician can charge you more, right? If they don't agree to take Medicare assignment, meaning that that the government, they're going to take what the government pays them as payment in full. With plan in, they can balance bill you. And so it, it, the easiest way, email or call us so we don't confuse yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, call Jen yeah. Kitty. I started working part-time with IHSS, and I am an SEIU union member. Oh, okay. So yeah. if I had Medicare A, B, and C, but have been notified to enroll in but I have been notified to enroll in Medicare again. What kind of insurance do I need now? If you have A, B, and C, you shouldn't have to enroll in anything that, else. Again. Unless we're talking about it's a union member, so it's probably a group retiree uh, plan. So they would have to ch check with their union office probably or whoever that is. Hmm, yeah. Ah, that's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, check with your union office. That They would probably have that information. Can I change my current supplement plan and the insurance company I use now, or do I have to wait for the open enrollment period in October? So that, <laughs> so that depends. Um, in Excuse California, me. to change your supplement, <laughs> you can do that every year within 30 days of your birthday. Um, and then there's a handful of other states that have rules as far as when you could change. So that would right. be important. Uh, reach out to us. It really depends on what state you're in. But you're the in. answer is you can try every month, right? They're really, you if you're healthy questions. enough and you can answer health questions, yeah. you can you can try. Next up, I have a Cigna Medicare Advantage plan HMO paying zero premiums. Does a plan G cover more or less than my Medicare Advantage plan, which also covers me when I'm traveling, which right. also covers me when I'm traveling internationally? Um, so we would have to do a comparison because Medicare Advantage plans vary wildly as far as their coverage. Right. Um, but really, the biggest difference between them is where you're wanting to get care and the ease of use of it. Um, with Advantage plans, a lot of them have co-pays. Right, like exactly. That. Yeah. With an Advantage plan, you may pay zero premium, but you may pay more out of pocket than a with more. traditional Medicare and a, and a plan G. So it really depends. But Katie's right. We're going to do a comparison. Yeah. Perfect. And what 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 is the best thing to do when you are traveling <laughs> internationally? Um, so we have um, a travel health insurance policy that we use um, for Christian scientists. That's really important in case you need to be like evacuated um, or you need to be taken somewhere to get care. So um, if like an accident happens and you need to go to an emergency room um, or a hospital in another country, that becomes really, really important. Medicare does not cover you anytime you're outside of the United States. Right. Mexico and Canada are included. They're not United States. So but, anytime you're outside. The but Advantage plans do offer worldwide coverage, but I still like a uh, travel plan, mm -hmm. right? Perfect. Yeah, I think that's important. Unrelated question. If Medicare Advantage plans are free to most of us, how do they mm -hmm. make their money? <laughs> So when we talk about Medicare Advantage plans being extremely profitable to insurance companies, that is because with Medicare Advantage plans, they are subsidized by the federal government. So for every person or every member that an insurance company has on a Medicare Advantage plan, they're given about $1,000 a month from the federal government, sometimes more depending um, if the person has a lot of stuff going on medically. 
Um, so with Medicare Advantage plans, they would love for everyone to be on them and right. nobody to use them. That's right. And brokers <laughs> love them because they pay twice the commission up front. So that's why brokers sell them because it's much more profitable for them, quite mm -hmm. honestly. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty aggressive sales pitch. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think they gave me part D. Well, I don't know who this is, is but they actually gave me part D instead of part C. I don't know. That's unrelated. If a person is self-employed and is not under a group insurance policy and turns 65, but has not yet signed up for Social Security, is he subject to a penalty if he plans not to have Social Security until age 70? No. Social Security is not Medicare, right? So right. No. And you, you can delay that, right, in the government. And once you reach your full retirement age, the uh, Social Security pays you 8% simple interest not to take your benefit until age 70. But- if you're not on a group plan with 20 or more employees, so in this case, I think they said they were um, self-employed. If you're self-employed, then you would want to sign up for Medicare Part A and Part B when right. you turn 65, or that's right. when you're subject to But they policy. ask about Social Security, oh, Social Security not Medicare, okay, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, yeah. I understand we're talking about a federal program, but could you still tell us if there are unique state laws or regulations that we need to consider regarding Medicare? No, it's federal, it's federal law. Great. Am I required to have part B? I never signed up for it. Even if it is not required, how do I disenroll in part B? Um, well, if you didn't sign up for it, you wouldn't need to disenroll. Right. Um, it's not required to have part B. So you could just have part A. Um, Part B just covers you on the medical side and allows you to have the supplement. Um, having Part B just may be something that's important right. um, in case, and I know we've talked to lots of Christian scientists where they've had um, something happen where against their wishes, they were taken maybe via ambulance to an emergency room, whether they've passed out or they're unconscious or something else is going on and they weren't able to talk about their wishes. Right. And not having Part B would mean you would be subject to the full cost of any emergency right. room visit right. or ambulance or anything here's, here's, like that. Here's the bottom line. Don't do that. That's not that's not in your best interest to disenroll from Part B. It's just it's not. That's not prudent. If your goal is to protect your, you know, retirement funds, yeah, you don't you don't want to do that. Those I can say that so high. I'm sorry. Go yeah. ahead, John. No, I, I, I've lived this. I mean, I, I did pass out uh, at the car dealership when I was getting my car fixed. I wasn't feeling well. And I ended up at uh, San Francisco General. Some have, have heard this story. It is crazy expensive. It is unbelievably expensive. And I was there less than 45 minutes. The, the, the ambulance ride, all this sort of thing, the tests that they performed without my knowledge um, and I did have insurance at that time and it, it, I was out of network. I mean, it was just crazy. And that's one thing I think Christian scientists don't understand is if you get caught into the medical system, it is unbelievably expensive. Um, and that was what in 2012. So this is what over 10 years ago. So it's it's expensive. Right. It, it is crazy, John. We see bills, people. You you wouldn't believe the bills we see. It's unbelievable. I mean, Jim right? had a procedure done last last year, one hundred and twenty four thousand dollars for, for, for seven, seven and a half hours, right? And yeah. that wasn't even. I was in the hospital outpatient surgery, but it wasn't. It probably was a surgery for an hour, and uh, but one hundred twenty four thousand dollar bill. It's crazy. People have no but, idea how costly. My it is. Medicare and my supplement, John, <laughs> I paid zero. I paid nothing. Right. So right. Paid, that, that's why that last question uh, that kind of bothers me. Don't you really have to think about the long term effects of just dropping it because I don't want to pay for it for a while? I, I absolutely would never recommend that. Because yeah, those not, medical costs can yeah, be so significant. <clears throat> that, yeah. Okay. What else we have? Yeah. <laughs> Will it be too expensive to enroll in Part B now that I'm 84? Oof. Well, you're going to have a penalty. So again, what I would do, I would call Social Security office and ask them what that penalty would be, right? Maybe maybe you were on your husband's or your, your group plan until 70, so maybe it's only 14 years of penalty, which would be a 140% penalty in that example. So call them and let them tell you what the penalty would be. And then honestly, 
think about it, pray about it. And if you can afford it, I would do, you know, you don't have to do the supplement, but get, get part B. I think that would really protect you, help protect you. Okay, we have five questions left for the home stretch. Okay. I have parts A and B. Who do I contact to add Medicare, Medicare Supplemental Advantage Part G? Okay, so Medicare Advantage, is, is that's not the good one for Christian right. scientists. Supplement Plan G is the good one. And John, they could call us, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, call Jim and Katie. Um, that's, that's why we do yeah, this. The Medicare Advantage, bad. Supplement, good <laughs> right. for Christian scientists. <laughs> no, seriously, and I, I always say that because... You, you, they just keep saying it, and you know it's a. Right. And now they call them all-inclusive plans. Oh, Get a Part C all-inclusive. Mm -hmm. People don't even know what that means. Just supplement. But all-inclusive sounds fun. Right. <laughs> that, yeah, that's right. That's, exactly. I signed up for a Medicare Advantage plan at age 65. If I change to original Medicare now at age 70, will I be penalized for not signing up for Plan B or D at age 65? Um, so when you're on a Medicare Advantage yeah, plan, you have to have A and B. Right. So you're you're already having A and B. Um, so what you're doing is you're saying, I just I don't want that Advantage plan because when you have A and B in the Advantage, Advantage now is your primary insurance. If you drop the Medicare Advantage plan, then A and B now becomes your primary insurance again. The only time that your costs would go up is if you added a supplement plan. But if you just said, I'm just going to yeah, keep but, A and B. But let's talk about that for a second here, because that's important. So just because you're paying zero premium for Medicare Advantage plan, you, you've got all co-pays and out-of-pocket costs. And let's say your average out-of-pocket cost is maybe four or $5,000. If you have a PPO, it's usually four to $7,000. Well, if I compare that, if I have my plan G and my age, 135 bucks a month, and my out of pocket is 240 bucks for the year. It is much, much less costly overall to be on a Medicare supplement plan and pay that smaller premium, right? It, it, it is. And I've limited my, limit my exposure to $240. So when you're talking about cost, you have to look beyond zero versus $135. There you go. I believe I have A and B. Do I need G? As I say, some of these questions are repetitive. Right. <laughs> um, no, you don't. You don't have to purchase G. Right. You're just going to be on the hook for twenty percent. Right. On Part B, you pay that small deductible, but then the government pays eighty percent. You pay twenty percent. But if you had my surgery on my knee and it was one hundred twenty-four thousand dollar bill, and you're going to pay twenty percent of that, you're going to write a check for almost twenty-five thousand dollars. I'd rather pay my one hundred thirty-five dollars a month. And once I hit my deductible, I paid zero. So or you, you don't need have to go to, to the rinky right. that can help yeah, a lot. Correct, absolutely. Nancy. This right. is where you have. Gonna... Sorry, go uh, again uh, with uh, with the um, Medicare supplemental. It'll help you with the uh, in and a rinky with the coinsurance payments that that right. uh, if if you needed to stay longer than sixty days. Um, uh, a lot of our people are in and out within that 60 day period and all they owe is the, is the uh, deductible of $1,600. So it is an individual financial decision uh, right. whether or not you want to be covering those kinds of, of quote risks. Yeah, and it's important to, important to understand too, that deductible for part A, it's not calendar year. So if I go in and I receive care in a hospital or a rinky, um, after 60 days, a new benefit period, after I haven't received any care or treatment after 60 days, a new benefit period starts, I'd have to pay that deductible again. So part B is a calendar year, part A is not. So you can probably, you probably get three of those if you had different uh, part A services throughout the year. So you have to be careful of that. And some of these questions, you know, this is helpful to talk about with family members too, because loved ones want to know that their parents or their loved ones have coverage, you know, so that, you know, that the costs are covered and people with the advanced healthcare directive, that people know what their choice of care is. These why, this is what, this is why all of these things that we've been talking about are so helpful to think through ahead of time and work with your families and, and loved ones and so on. 
very important and the scenario, conversations. Um, the scenario that we talked about briefly before where uh, you wake up and, and maybe you're not in the place of your choice, that's where that advanced healthcare directive is so Essential. helpful because then your loved one can bring that to the hospital. It shows that that's what you wanted and and it helps to to be able to, to get you to a Christian Science Nursing Facility. And if you don't have it, you're not going anywhere. That's not, everyone's trying to do the right thing. And so people are, hospitals or whomever are afraid of being sued because they don't want to be liable. And so that's really a protection to you as your for, as an individual for your choice of care. So it's clearly stated uh, in, in writing and, and vetted um, so that everybody says, okay, this is what you've, you've agreed to and this is what we'll do. But if you don't have that, it's pretty tough to get out of a hospital. We've experienced that several times with patients here at Ardenwood. So have your affairs in order. We've got our last question. Um, I am not paying anything for, uh, again, this is some repetitive, some of these. I'm not paying anything for my Medicare Advantage right now. If I switch to Plan G, will I pay more? Yeah, well, we, ju we just did that, right? That's you, so you're right. You're gonna pay more premium, but less overall out of pocket. So it really depends. But if your goal is to go to a Christian science facility, right, for, for spiritual healing, then you, I would recommend going to Original Medicare and getting a supplement. If you go, I'm not going to worry about that. And if something happens, I'm good paying zero. And I know I'm going to pay more out of pocket. They may have an issue if I have a stay at Ardenwood, for example. And I know there's other ways you, you want to talk about briefly, right? How the, the, the fund can help them out, John. Hmm. Yeah, I will say that. And so the last question is actually, I, uh, is where can I find the contact information for Katie and Jim? Well, that'll be showing just in a moment. So um, it's interesting, John, just as we're talking here, my, e the emails are coming in. We've right. got several more questions on it. <laughs> there you go. Coming in. So that's a good thing. Right? Friends, we, that's we why we offer these webinars. We found them to be so helpful for our field. And as I say, we've loved working with Jim and Katie. Please call them. So thank you, Jim and Katie and Nancy. These webinars are always helpful. Please don't hesitate to call any of these three with Medicare or insurance-related questions at any time. They're happy to help. One other resource that Nancy mentioned you're welcome to contact is the Christian Science Provider Network, which works directly with Medicare on behalf of Christian Science care facilities, as well as individual Christian scientists. Um, they are very helpful. Another resource for financial assistance available to Christian scientists of any age is the National Fund for Christian Science Nursing, or the NFCSN. You can go to NF, nfcsn.org, uh, nfcsn.org, for information. The contact information, information for these resources is listed at the end of today's webinar. Again, the point of this is to be wise, to be think, it's wise to be thinking about your options now. And finally, before we go, I want to invite you to our annual meeting on Sunday, May 5th at 2 p.m. Pacific. It will be online. Madeline Maupin is our inspirational speaker this year, and her talk is titled, Moving at the Impulse of the Holy Spirit. You'll receive an email invitation closer to the date. I also want to be sure that you save the date on your calendars for our Christmas program. Do you think about that? Wow, Christmas. It's usually the first Sunday in December, but this year it will be the second Sunday in December, Sunday, December 8th. The first Sunday this year is just three days after Thanksgiving. So please mark it on your calendar. You can register for all of our online events on our website at ardenwood.org. Thank you all for joining us for joining us today and we wish you goodbye for now and we'll see you next time Bye, thank everybody. you Bye.